Lynn. Welcome back to Cooking with Lynn. I'm in my kitchen today with my son Nate. He's going to be baking for us again. Uh, last time he was here we did rough puff pastry mm -hmm. and he's back again to do focaccia. I'm probably not saying that right. But focaccia. Focaccia. <laughs> How's it going? Uh, so today we're going to do something a little bit simpler than rough puff even though rough puff was also a simple recipe. Um, if you're into baking bread and you want to make something that's super easy, focaccia is one of the easiest things you can make. It is literally just flour, water, salt, and yeast. Um, you don't need to get fancy with it. Today we're going to be using uh, the King Arthur uh, unbleached bread flour. It's one of my favorites. We're going to be using the Diamond Crystal Kosher Salt um, and Fleshman's Yeast. You can use any active dry yeast you want for this recipe. But we're going to start, we've already bloomed our yeast. Um, if, have we made a bread in the past? I can't remember. No. Okay, so when you make a bread typically with an active dry yeast, you want to do something called blooming, and that's when you put your yeast in warm water, somewhere between 95 and 105 degrees. You want to make sure that you don't want to exceed 115 degrees, because it'll kill the yeast. The reason you do this is pretty much because you want to make sure that the yeast is alive, and you also want to make it a little bit easier for the yeast to uh, fully incorporate into the, dough, into the flour. So we have half a cup of warm water here that we've dissolved 8 grams of yeast in. And we're going to add that straight to our stand mixer. Blooming takes around 5 to 10 minutes, but since we already did it for time, you don't need to worry about it. We also have 537 grams of room temperature water. It's about 2.5 to 3 cups of water. So um, for equipment, you it's helpful to have a stand mixer mm -hmm. and also a scale because yes. measuring... You could probably things. do it by, um, by measurement cups or volumetric cups, but um, I always weigh everything when I bake in the scale. It just makes everything a little bit easier. Um, so we have all of our water into the uh, stand mixer. We're going to be adding 780 grams of uh, bread flour to this. No, nope, this doesn't really matter. Nope. Yeah, we're going to miss some. It's fine. I don't have to clean up after this. She does, so. <laughs> All right, so we're going to attach the stand mixer. We're also going to be putting in 17 grams of kosher salt. If you're using iodized salt, um, you want to still measure out 17 grams because it's just the volume, not the, not the density. All right, so we're going to put that in there, and we're going to let this mix for about 10 minutes. And like low or high or... Yeah, so you're going to mix it on low at first just so that every incorporates. And the reason that we put in um, the water first is so that when you put the flour on top, the flour incorporates into the water. If you do it the other way around, you're more likely to get, get clumps um, because the water compresses the flour before it get, gets mixed in. We're going to lose a little bit. It's fine. It <laughs> if your dough, dough looks a little um, dry, you can just add some water to it. So it's supposed to look like a wet, very wet dough. Mm -hmm. So we've put all of our bread flour, our water, our salt, and our yeast mixture into our stand mixer. Uh, we mixed it for about 10 minutes, and we let it rest for about 5 after the initial mix. What we're going to do now is we're going to mix it a little bit on medium-low while we prepare our baking sheet. We have our proof bowl here as well. Um, we're not going to use the baking sheet yet, but I want to start preparing that just so that we're prepared for when we're proofed. And then, do you have any parchment paper, dear mom? All right, so this is a, a, a single batch. The, the swap that we made for um, this is a double batch, so it's going to be look a little bit bigger. Um, but for um, a single batch, we use a typical 13 by 9 It's a sheet pan. No, yeah, it's a sheet pan. It's a normal size sheet pan that you'll probably have in your fridge. Everybody has one. And you're pretty much just going to want to line. Oh, there we go. That's perfect. We have more if you need it. Just gonna want to line your sheet pan with a little bit of parchment paper. And I always like to just kind of ruffle the edges to make sure it stays. All right. And so sometimes if you're using parchment paper and you're like, oh, it's not sticking to the pan. Sometimes I'll take a little bit of olive oil and just kind of grease the pan underneath, and it'll kind of help it form a seal. Makes it a lot easier. So we're going to wait until this is really smooth and elastic, and it looks pretty good so far. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it off, 
Now, mind you, this is an extremely sticky dough. It's very hard to handle. I always like to just get, once again, a little bit of olive oil on my fingertips. And so from your stand mixture bowl, you're going to want to just start scooping until it starts to come out. Make sure you don't break it or try not to break any of the gluten that you just worked so hard to make. And so we have this, uh, we have um, a fourth of a cup of olive oil. It's like a half a cup. It's not as important right now um, in our bowl with our dough. So this is the way it's going to proof. And we're going to get some of the olive oil on top. And then Mother Dearest here is going to take this and cover it. We're going to keep it at room temperature for about an hour to proof. Um, and once it's proofed, we're going to put it on the uh, baking sheet. So just cover it with like a towel? Yeah. Uh, it can be covered with a towel. It could be a damp towel. It could be plastic wrap. If you have a fancy glass bowl that has a cover, it might explode, but you can put the cover on it. Just got to wash my hands and then we can just pull the swab out. It should be proof by now. <clears throat> All right, we're going to move some things out of the way. So this is our swap. Um, I made this dough last night it, with the exact same um, recipe and methods that we just used right now. It's a double batch, so it looks a lot bigger. I just wanted to make sure that everyone could see what we were doing. But, um, so after you proof your dough in its bowl, you're going to put it on a sheet pan. We actually might have time to, to do it before because we're going to have to bake that off anyway. You're going to put it in the, the, the sheet pan and you're going to cover it. I like to cover it with another sheet pan and then either saran wrap it. I've used duct tape before um, just to kind of seal it and let it proof and get those bubbles without... Uh, disturbing the fermentation process. You can totally do this with a sheet pan and cover it in plastic wrap. I don't like doing that because even though there's a lot of oil on top, I still find like most cling wraps will stick to the top and you really want to maintain that really nice bubbly structure. So um, the next thing that we're going to do basically is, I just need one more bowl. <clears throat> Since this is a very sticky dough and it's focaccia, so we want to make sure that we are doing the traditional holes. You want to kind of make those finger holes that everyone's familiar with when it comes to focaccia. You want to make sure you have those good divots. And then basically from there, you top. So we have some um, sliced garlic here. We have some rosemary and thyme. Yep. So what we're going to do, do you mind, um, you want to strip some rosemary while I start with the onions. We have some caramelized onions here that we are going to drizzle on top. They're slightly undercooked because this focaccia is going to bake for about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, and you don't want to make sure, you want to make sure that the onions don't burn. Yeah, I just caramelized those with a little bit of brown sugar for about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. And we're working over each other. <laughs> Sorry, it's like a lot. It's a real, real line kitchen. You need. All right, that looks good. Move the garlic, and you can do pretty much anything on top of focaccia. There are so many good recipes online for toppings that have cheese. I've made focaccia pizza before. Mm -hmm. Very, very good. Do you you want can um. The rosemary hole up there. Yep, the rosemary can go on straight. I'm just gonna drop some sprigs. And we also want to use some um, a little bit of kosher salt on top too. I'm just gonna help us form a little bit of a crust on top. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to chop your fingers off a little. <laughs> Don't do that. Chop it off a little. Time is not as easy to strip. Mm. It's kind of a free form bread. Yeah, just throwing it all on. Mm hmm. You can get fancy. You've made real fancy ones. With yeah, you can do. Um, there's a lot of people on Pinterest um, and on like Instagram who do like focaccia art. You can kind of make a whole scene with your ingredients. Last year I did. I think it was like a fall scene. I used peppers for flowers and. That was amazing. Mm, it's very nice. One of my masterpieces of 2021. <laughs> All right. Is it an 
enough herbs on there. Yeah, I think that's good. Lots of garlic, lots of onions, lots of herbs. I'm going to put a little put bit of salt. Olives, which I don't like, but so I didn't let him put olives, but you can put olives. Sorry. <laughs> you can put meat, too. Could you you could. Yeah, you absolutely could. All right, so we are going to bake this off at about 375. Oops, we're going to bump it up then. Yeah, it's going to be a little higher. Um, 375 for 25 to 35 minutes. Basically what you're looking for is just the top to get really brown. You're looking for a nice rise. Um, but besides that, we're going to bake this off and then come back and show you the result. We proofed our focaccia dough for about an hour. Then we put it out on a tray. Uh, this focaccia dough specifically was proofed overnight. Um, you can proof it overnight for 12 to 24 hours. Uh, the longer you proof it, the better it's going to taste. I always like to do it overnight, cover it with a sheet pan, put it in the fridge, take it out, wait one hour until you bake it, until it proofs a little bit more, top it and bake, and this is what you get. It was in there about a good 35 mm -hmm. minutes or so? So there's this some... This is a double batch. Right? Yeah, this is a bigger batch, so it'll, it, it'll definitely cook on the 35 to 40 minute side. Um, but yeah, most focaccia recipes are kind of the same, but they'll bake uh, longer or shorter depending on how much hydration's in there. Um, you can top it with anything, but yeah, this looks great. Yeah, shot. I think I will do a pan shot yeah, and then. Nice. Very good. So a little too hot to eat, but I'm sure it's delicious. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's pretty much it. All right. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, come back and see me in October. I'm doing uh, butternut squash lasagna. So come back and see us again. Thanks, everyone. Have a good. Cut. <laughs> Cut. And.